Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm really excited for today's video. This is a video I have wanted to do for a very long time since I actually lost my 140 pounds. This is something that I really thought long and hard about and I wanna share with you. And that is 10 kind of surprising things I learned along my 100 and 40 pound weight loss. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I upload five videos every week and we always do something fun and exciting on Sunday. And like I said, this is a video I've definitely thought long and hard about, put a lot of work into and am excited to share with you. Also check out the description box for nutrition coaching. Highly recommend those personalized macros and calories. That is what I followed to lose and maintain my 140 pound weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and my Facebook group. It's free. It's supportive. We would love to have you are all down in that description box. So let's talk about the 10 things I learned while losing 140 pounds. Like I said, I put a lot of thought into this video. I really thought long and hard. What are the top 10 interesting or things you may not think about that you learn when you're on a weight loss journey, when you're successful with weight loss. If you're new to my channel, I have lost 140 pounds and maintained that weight loss for over a year. And I've learned a lot of things. I have learned a lot over the last couple of years losing my weight and how to maintain that weight loss. There's been highs, there's been lows, but there are 10 things that really resonate with me when it comes to being on a weight loss journey. And number one is you have to meet yourself where you're at. It is important to have goals. It's important to have short-term goals. It's important to have long-term goals, but it's even more important to meet yourself where you are. Especially in the age of social media, it's really, really hard not to compare ourselves to others. Maybe you're not as successful on your weight loss journey as someone on social media, or maybe you lift weights in the gym just as often as them and they have way more muscle than you. The Comparison truly is the thief of joy. The only person you're in competition with is yourself. Focus on where you are and progress from there. Every body is different. We're all in different places in our lives. We're all in different places in our weight loss journey. And like I said, don't compare yourself to anybody else because they're not in the same place as you. Focus on where you are and progress from there. Compete only with yourself. And this is important in every single aspect of wellness, whether it's weight loss, whether it's in the gym, whether it's any exercise that you do, it's really important important to meet yourself where you are. Just because you can't do a dumbbell snatch today doesn't mean that you won't get there someday. Have some grace with yourself, embrace honesty and truly where you are, and I promise you, you will eventually reach your goals. Number two, never ever, ever eliminate anything completely. In the age of diet culture, in the age of diet, 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 do this to lose weight, do that to lose weight, every single diet is going to eliminate or restrict something. That is not the way. I promise you that is not the way to lose weight and keep it off. Maybe these diets tell you to eat small portions, to eliminate carbohydrates and sugar. None of these things work in the long term. And the only way to lose weight, and I want you to write this down for those in the back of the room, the only way to lose weight is to be in a calorie deficit. Every single diet works because you're in a calorie deficit. So why not be in a calorie deficit eating your favorite foods and eating the foods that you enjoy? Restricting and eliminating anything is the number one cause of binge eating. If you tell yourself that you're not gonna eat carbohydrates because you want to lose weight, what happens when you lose the weight and you go back to eating carbohydrates? You're going to gain the weight back or you're not even going to get to your weight loss goal because you're starving for carbohydrates. And then when you get your hands on your favorite bag of chips or cookies or pizza, you're going to overindulge. You're going to binge. Restricting and eliminating is the number one cause of binge eating. I literally eat whatever I want. I just work it into my day. I've never restricted or eliminated any food or food group. I eat dessert every single day. I've eaten dessert every day on my 140 pound weight loss because for me, that is sustainable. And whatever you do to lose weight, you have to do that to maintain the weight loss. Everything in moderation and portion control is key in losing weight, not restricting or eliminating foods. Number three, you can do anything, and I mean anything, you set your mind to. I really, really, really wanted to build lean muscle when I started my weight loss journey. I have said time and time again here on my channel that when I set out on my weight loss journey over 300 pounds, my goal was to never be skinny. My goal was to shed fat and build lean muscle. That has been my goal from the beginning. And I really, really wanted to have visible lean muscle. So midway through 2022, after I had lost about 60 pounds, I started a workout routine that included HIIT training, my boot camp group, and lifting weights in the gym. 
in the pursuit of shedding the fat and building the muscle. Now it was hard in the beginning. Boot camp was incredibly hard. I would be sore for days and days and days. In fact, I was always sore because I would do boot camp, have a day off and go back to boot camp. So I never really got to the point that I wasn't sore. My average heart rate was extremely high when I started boot camp. I was in the gym lifting weights and wasn't seeing any visible results. But I didn't have to be a female bodybuilder and I didn't have to do boot camp without being out of breath or having a heart, high heart rate. All I had to do was keep going and eventually I was able to build that lean muscle. I was able to lower my heart rate. Now I'm lucky if my average heart rate at boot camp gets to 130 when it was in the 150s. That is all about building your cardiovascular system, building up your health, and doing anything you set your mind to. Consistency is going to help you get there, whatever that is. Whether it's lifting weights, whether it's losing weight, whether it's building lean muscle, whether it's running, jogging, hiking, whatever it is, stick with it and I promise you, you can do whatever you set your mind to. And that is a lesson that I quickly learned and a lesson that I will take with me every single day for the rest of my life. Speaking of movement and setting exercise goals, number four, your get moving options are honestly endless. I've had many different fitness mentalities. When I was at my heaviest weight, I would do jazzercise a couple of times a week. It was extremely hard on my body, so I wasn't able to do it more than a couple of times a week. When I started my fitness journey, it was just going to the gym, walking to the gym, lifting weights. Then I discovered boot camp, started going to boot camp. Then I started implementing 5Ks and 10Ks and hiking. Your fitness journey will progress throughout your weight loss journey as it should be. It is so important to mix up your exercise routine. Maybe the fitness you do at the beginning or the exercises you do at the beginning may not be anywhere near what you do at the end. It's all about bettering, our, bettering ourselves. And like I said, competing with yourself. And it is very, very important to change up your exercise. There are endless things you can do out there to move your body, especially if you're lifting weights. You do need to be changing up your workouts every four to six weeks. Your body will get used to workouts. Your muscle memory will kick in and you won't be reaping the same rewards from those workouts as you were in the beginning. My recommendation for you is to download the Copilot app for 14 days for free, get in touch with the coach, get a workout routine, see if you enjoy it. No obligation. If you don't like it, you can cancel it after the 14 days, but Copilot will change your workouts for you every four to six weeks. In fact, my coach just changed my workout for the third time since starting Copilot and I'm only in my third month. Add variety to your exercise routine and it's hard to figure out what to do, especially when it comes to lifting weights in the gym or lifting weights at home. It's really hard to know what exercises to do. Is your form correct? And that's why I love having somebody to guide me like Copilot. So I'll put Copilot down below for you, but add variety to your workout routine. And again, the possibilities of movement are endless. Number five, Invest in your own personal wellness. The only person that has control over you is you. And the only person that can reach your goals for you is you. One thing you can really do is invest in fun workout clothes. Whether you're going to be a runner, lift weights, go to boot camp, whatever it is, invest in your wellness. And that means putting yourself in some cute workout clothes so you're motivated to go to the gym. I have a workout clothes problem. I am constantly buying new workout clothes. I actually just placed an order with Buff Bunny Collection. I love workout athletic wear. I wear it every single day. I'm in the gym almost every single day. I'm at boot camp. And honestly, I typically wear workout clothes just as comfortable leisure clothes. But I will tell you, if I'm putting on a cute workout outfit and a cute pair of tennis shoes, I am motivated to do my workout. Invest in something that makes you feel good. And if that means spending a little bit more money on good quality workout clothes than a six pack of shirts off of Amazon, then do that for yourself. Invest in your wellness. And wellness starts with exercise and nutrition. It's okay to spend money on a good quality food. Healthy food costs more than unhealthy food. You have to figure out where is your money best served to help you reach your wellness goals. And investing a little bit in yourself is going to lead to huge payoffs overall. Number six is one of the things that I started day one, and that is rewarding yourself for small wins. When I set out on my weight loss journey, I was over 300 pounds. I had well over 100 pounds to lose, closer to 150 pounds to lose. And if I would have just set a goal to lose 150 pounds, I can guarantee you a few months in, I would have been completely unmotivated. And it's very unlikely that I would be where I am today. Instead, I set one large goal, which was to lose the weight, get to my goal weight, and then little mini goals along the way. And as I hit those mini goals, I rewarded myself. For me, what seemed to motivate me the most was to set weight 
decade. So for example, if I started my weight loss journey at 300 pounds, when I got into the next decade, which would be the 290s, I would give myself a reward. Now it doesn't have to be a huge reward. It doesn't have to be an expensive reward, but giving yourself yourself little rewards along the way will absolutely motivate you and hitting all of those small goals, you'll eventually hit that big goal at the end. And that's when you really reward yourself. Make sure whatever goals you set are SMART goals. SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. For example, I want to drink a gallon of water every day before 6 p.m. That's a goal that's relatable. There's a time on it. You have to do it by 6 p.m. There's a set goal, the gallon of water. Make sure your goals are SMART goals. Again, it's going to be a structure goal that you're able to measure when you achieve it. And that's how you reward yourself. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a monetary reward. Maybe you do something special for yourself, like have a spa day at home, or maybe you treat yourself to a pedicure when you've lost 25 pounds. Setting those small goals will get you to the big goal and keep you motivated. I can't stress enough how important it is to set small goals and reward yourself along the way. Number seven. Number seven's hard. Number seven's hard because as human beings, we strive for perfection especially on a weight loss journey. We're like, we're going to hit our goals. We're going to reach our goal weight. We're going to eat good all week. We're not going to splurge. You're not going to be perfect. Nobody is perfect. And you're certainly absolutely not going to be perfect on a wellness and health journey. How many times have you told yourself today? I'm going to do good today. I'm going to stay on track today. I'm going to get in my protein today. I'm not going to splurge. How many times I have told myself this over my years upon years upon years of dieting more times than I would like to admit. And then you eat that chocolate bar and you throw in the towel and you start over tomorrow, next week, next Monday. Raise your hand, comment down below. Let me know if you've done this. Like I said, I did this over and over and over again. And that was one of the biggest diet culture things that I got trapped into that really set me back on my weight loss journey. Here's the cold hard truth. The all or nothing mentality is going to get you absolutely nowhere on your weight loss journey. Things aren't always going to go as planned. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have slip ups. You're going to go off track rather than get angry, frustrated, throw your hands in the air, start over next Monday. Be really proud of yourself for prioritizing your health and your weight loss in the first place. Every single second of every single day, you have the opportunity for a fresh start for a clean slate. You don't have to wait till next Monday. You don't even have to wait till the next meal. You can start on a clean slate anytime that you want. Give yourself grace. Do not have the all or nothing mentality. Know that you're human and you're going to make mistakes. It is 80, 20, 80% on track, 20% living your best life. And I promise you following the 80, 20 rule is going to deliver weight loss results. That's what I did. And I've lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss. Number eight, water really is your BFF. I've never really been that great at drinking water. I don't love the taste of water. I mean, water doesn't have any taste. So I like to add things to my water to entice me to drink it. Whether that's water enhancers. Right now I have my one up nutrition creatine in my water. Maybe I squeeze some fresh lemons or limes or throw some fruit in there. Whatever you have to do to get in your water, do it. Just because you flavor your water doesn't mean it doesn't count as your water for the day. Water is water, whether it's flavored or not. Did you know that water accounts for 60% of your body? That's 11 gallons of water or 92 pounds of water in a 155 pound person. That's a lot of water and it is essential for every single cell in the human body. The minimum amount of water that you want to drink every day is eight, eight, eight ounce glasses of water or 64 ounces, which is half of a gallon. So this is a 40 ounce cup. So if I drink one and a half of these, I have my water in for the day. I typically drink between three and four of these every single day. You need to prioritize water. And what I did when I first started my weight loss journey, when I still drank things like diet Coke or diet Pepsi or sparkling water is I told Told myself that I wasn't allowed to have any other beverage other than my morning cup of coffee until I got in my water for the day. And there were many, many, many days that by the end of the night I hadn't gotten in my water. So I didn't allow myself to have any other type of beverage. That's how important prioritizing your water is. Now today I don't drink carbonated beverages at all. In fact, the only thing I drink is water and coffee. So that has really helped me consistently get in my water. Water helps with dehydration, helps you recover from a workout, 
flushes everything out. If you follow a high protein diet, you can have constipation. It's very, very normal. But by drinking extra water, it will also help flush that out. And if you're retaining water, guess what? Drinking water gets rid of the water you're retaining. I know it sounds counterproductive, but it's the truth. So focus on eight, eight ounce glasses of water or more every day. Ideally, work yourself up to a gallon of water. It will change your life and your weight loss journey. Number nine is totally underrated. And this is honestly the first thing I thought of when I was putting together this list of 10 things. And that is the mental transformation is even more important than the physical transformation. I'm still working on my inner dialogue. I'm still working on being kind to myself. I still look in the mirror and pick apart all my loose skin or wonder why my muscles don't show more or think that I'm still fat or I have weight to lose. I'm really working on that and I'm intentionally working on that. It is a forever long process. I'm not going to wake up one day and be completely happy with everything about my body. I really try to speak positively to myself and have a positive mental state. When a big transformation happens on the outside, that big transformation doesn't always happen on the inside. You really need to think about who you are, what's important to you, and who do you want to be moving forward. We are a forever work in progress. There's probably never going to be a time that we're 100% happy with every piece of our health journey. So make sure that you're taking time to reflect that if you're speaking negatively to yourself, make it a priority to speak positively positive to yourself. The mental side of weight loss is so much harder than the physical side. Working on your relationship with food, healing your relationship with food. I will be putting out a video on how I healed my relationship with food because that's one mental thing that I'm really proud of myself for. Being proud of who you are, even if you're not where you want to be. Again, meeting yourself in the moment. That is so important and constantly, daily, working on your mental health as well as your physical health. And number 10, and I saved number 10 for last because I feel like this is all encompassing of a health and wellness journey, a weight loss journey, and that is whatever you're doing, make it your lifestyle. This is how you're going to get lasting, permanent change. This is truly something I cannot stress enough. Like I said, whatever you do to lose weight, you have to do to maintain your weight loss. You have to have a healthy lifestyle forever to continue to reach and maintain whatever health and weight loss goals you've set for yourself. No amount of exercise, zero, will help you against an unhealthy diet. You cannot out exercise a bad diet. So the most important thing you can do forever and ever and ever from this day forward is to prioritize your nutrition. Weight loss, maintaining your weight loss overall health is 80 to 90% nutrition and 10 to 20% exercise. You don't have to exercise to lose weight and you cannot out exercise a bad diet. Think about how you'll feel or how you felt when you hit your goal weight, how proud you were, how inspired you were, how motivated you were to keep going. Whenever you fall off track or feel like you're in a rut, think about those things. Think about the good things that have happened on your health and weight loss journey. Go back to those things and it will reignite and re-motivate you to keep pressing forward. Keep a level head. It's okay to overindulge. It's okay to have a meal out. It's okay to eat your favorite foods every single day. It's all about moderation, portion control, and eating a well-rounded, sustainable, healthy diet. And that includes all foods and all food groups. And learn to give yourself grace. If you make a mistake, if you have a slip up, which is absolutely normal, we're human beings, Give yourself grace and move on. Like I said, you have so many seconds in a day for a clean slate. We want to focus on lasting sustainable change that will give us a healthy lifestyle forever. You don't want to lose weight just to gain it all back. It is so hard to lose weight. We want to lose it and keep it off and we want to live our best life. So focusing on whatever you need to do to make it healthy and sustainable long term, that is what I absolutely recommend overall. So those are the 10 kind of interesting things I learned along my weight loss journey. Let me know which of these really resonated with you and let me know what you want to work on when it comes to your personal weight loss and health journey. Like I said, I'll be doing a video about how I healed my relationship with food. So again, make sure you're subscribed, your bell's on so you don't miss it. And let us know too down in the comments, what have you learned? What have you learned on your weight loss journey? Share it with us. You may inspire and motivate someone in their health and wellness journey. And if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. It definitely helps out my channel. And check out the description box. I will link Copilot. Please check it out. Get a coach, get a workout, work on your mental and your physical health on your wellness journey. And I will link all of my other favorite things as well as nutrition coaching and my free Facebook group. Come and join us. Seek support. We would love to have you. Thank you again for watching. See you next time. Bye.